Hello guys, John Stayskull here. Welcome back to yet another game dev tutorial slash Unity quick tip. So this is gonna be a good one. I'm gonna share with you guys a personal workflow technique that I think is very powerful and will allow us to create a nice color range in our projects with minimal performance and memory overhead. All right, let's get into it. So just jumping to a scene from my own project, Blood and Mead. And you can see here, I have a nice range of trees. I'm just gonna run this for you guys to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. All right, a nice scene with four different green colored trees and some color um, variants to create a sense of depth. Okay, so what is so special about these trees? Well, if I select one of these trees and reveal the sprite sheet behind this tree, dun, 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 you will see it's actually grayscale, it's not green. What does this mean exactly? Well, it means that we can select the components of the tree and through the sprite renderer, you can see here I've got it set to green, we can directly change this to create nice variation in color theme. Summer, winter, autumn. And you can tweak that and you can find a nice complementary color for your scene. We can only do this because the graphic is grayscale. If this tree was already colored, We'd be able to do this to some degree, but we wouldn't have the richness that we have um, when we do it like this. So you can see here, that's the um, sprite sheet. So how do we make it grayscale? If we jump to Photoshop here, we have a graphic. Now, this is how most people would be probably doing it, where we already have colored our graphic and we bring that in. And you can do that, but then if you want to have like a winter or autumn or something like that, you'll have to color these and bring them in. Now you're going to have three different sprite sheets and it's not so great on your overall memory footprint. So what you can do in Photoshop, you can um, select the graphic to create an adjustment and just pick this hue saturation and we can just bring that saturation down to zero, then um, create another adjustment this time we're gonna select the curve up here. It's a really neat tool and we can tweak this and change how dark the blacks are and how bright the whites are. So you kind of wanna play with this to find a nice sweet spot. And this will depend on your own graphic. You don't wanna necessarily copy what I have here. Um, so something like that. So then you bring that graphic into Unity and through the sprite renderer component color wheel, changing the color value to do some interesting color uh, variances on it directly. Now in Unity, there are other ways to accomplish this through, um, you know, there's various add-ons that allow you to tweak the hue and saturation directly to run runtime. In. Now those things are cool and they look really good, but with all those kind of runtime effects, there is a performance cost. And depending on how widespread you're using it in your project, especially on mobile, you could have issues. Now this technique I'm showing you with the grayscale, it may not be as robust and give us as rich uh, diversity in colors, but it has a very low memory footprint. You know, it's really good for, as you saw that tree example, maybe the player um, has got a skill and his armor needs to change color. So this technique primarily lends itself to color shifting objects and sprites that are of a similar color spectrum, like this armor piece here, which is all gray. Using this technique, we can select the armor and create some interesting color variations. Like this could be a dragon armor or this some kind of emerald armor and so on. It's just a really easy way to create multiple different item types without the need for new um, graphics or sprite sheets. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Unity quick tip. If you have, give it a big thumbs up down below. And thanks to my monthly Patreon supporters up here. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Thanks for keeping me motivated and this channel growing. See you in the next video, and as always, all the best on your game dev adventures.